Hello, this video will review how to use Microsoft Teams Voice. Before you begin using Microsoft Teams Voice, you want to make sure that Microsoft Teams is downloaded onto your computer. You also want to make sure that the Teams status is set appropriately for calls. You also want to make sure that Teams is set to auto start on your computer and that you have the calls link added to your menu bar for easy access. Upon opening Microsoft Teams, you'll need to check your status. In the upper right corner, choose your icon and make sure that your status is set to something other than Do Not Disturb. If it is set to Do Not Disturb, calls will not ring into your app. While you are here, you might also choose to Manage Account, General, and then under the Application area, make sure that it is set to Auto Start and Keep Running Upon Close. This will make sure Teams is running in the background of your computer and you're getting those calls while, you're continue to, while you are continuing to work. Next, you want to make sure the Calls icon is added to your main menu bar. If it's not already there, choose the three dots, search Calls, right-click, and pin it for easy access. Upon clicking on the icon, you'll see the main Calls console. Over on the far left side, you'll see the dial pad. This is also where you can search people within Teams to call. In the bottom area, you'll see where you can start forwarding your calls. In the middle area, you'll see a list of your history, which will show people you have called, as well as your vo voicemails. On the far right, you'll be able to see your speed dial. You can add or delete people here for easy dialing. When dialing someone with a keypad, you should not, no longer have to dial 9 or 1, just the actual number. You can also search somebody's name within Teams to call. You can add in multiple people to add multiple peoples to the call. When ready, press Call. Upon entering the call, you'll notice it looks very similar to a web conference. You want to make sure that your microphone is on so that they can hear you. You can choose to turn it into a video call using the camera feature. You can also use the chat feature if you like, as well as add in more participants here while you're actually in the call. Under More, you can choose to transfer the call to someone else. To transfer, search the name or dial the number of the person you would like to transfer the call to. If that person doesn't answer, you can choose for the caller to come back and ring back to you. Then choose transfer. You'll see a message that it is transferring. If it successfully transfers, this call box will close. If the transfer is set to come back to you on a transfer failure, the person will return to you in the call. At this point, they're on hold, so you want to make sure to resume to enter the call again. There may be in cases where you would like to consult with the person you're transferring the call to before you actually make the transfer. To do that, you'll choose More and then Consult, then Transfer. From there, you would search for the person that you're going to be transferring the call to. And then you can choose to chat. With this, a chat message would pop up and you would just provide an explanation. After that, you can choose Transfer, and it will successfully do the transfer for you. Early on in using Microsoft Teams Voice, you would want to set up your voicemail. You can do this in two ways. One way is to choose your icon in the top right, go to Manage Account, and then Calls, and configure voicemail. You can also get to this by going to the Calls area, going down to your forwarding area, choosing more settings, and then choosing the calls area and configure voicemail. When choosing such, you want to choose to record a greeting. 
Notice that the voicemail area also looks similar to a web conference call. You would then want to follow the protocol to set up your voicemail. There are two types of voicemails within Microsoft Teams Voice. There's the regular voicemail that will be used by default, as well as your away or out of office voicemail. This will be used when you're marked as out of office, such as for vacations or extended leave. You can edit your voicemail settings by going to the forward area in the bottom corner, More Settings, Calls, and then Configure Voicemail. This is where you recorded your greeting earlier. You can then determine what happens when a call goes to voicemail. By default, it's just going to let the caller record a message, but it may be that you want it transferred to someone else. It may be that you would like for them to record a message and then be transferred to someone else. Again, by default, your regular voicemail is what's going to play on the recording. If you would like to activate your out-of-office voicemail, you first want to make sure that you've recorded one, and then you would come down and choose when that out-of-office should play. If you're going to be gone for an extended amount of time, you might choose for that out-of-office voicemail to play all the time. Then when you return to office, you can just uncheck it, and it'll go back to the regular voicemail. Another way you might activate your out-of-office greeting is when you have an Outlook auto reply set. This will automatically start sending your out of office voicemail whenever you have an out of office email reply in place. In the bottom left corner you can set up call forwarding. You can choose different types of call forwarding. You might set it to where it's going to forward directly to your voicemail in cases where you're not going to be able to answer the phone. This might be in cases where you're in a meeting and you would not like for the call to ring in on your Teams app, so you just have it directly forward to your voicemail. You can also have to, uh, choose for it to forward to an individual or a group. You can set that up by going to More Settings, and then under Calls, you can choose to forward your calls. At that point, you can add in a new number or a contact for your, for, for your calls to forward to. You can also set for your calls to be forward to a group of people rather than just one. In that case, you would choose Call Group and then search the individual people there. By default, it is set so that they will forward directly to both of these individuals and it will ring both of them at the same time. I also have the option to change it to where it will ring to the first person and if he or she doesn't answer, it will ring to the second person in that above order. So in this area, we can now see that my calls are being forwarded to a call group of these two people. When I click on it, again, I can see that it's going in a certain order and not ringing all at the same time. While we are here, you can also change the settings of how the calls ring you individually. So there may be a case when you would like for a call to ring you, but also ring another person at the same time. In that case, you can choose Also Ring and choose an individual or even a call group so that the call is ringing you and other people at the same time. Again, you can change this call group here. You can also change the setting that if one, no one answers this call, they are sent to voicemail, maybe another number, or another call group. You can also change the number of seconds the call rings before it is sent to voicemail, another person, or a call group. By default, it's on 20 seconds. When you receive a voicemail to Microsoft Teams Voice, you will see it in the All area of the Calls console panel. You'll also see it in the Voicemail tab. You'll also receive an email where you can listen to the audio here right from within your email. It is very important to note, however, that if you delete this email, it will automatically delete it from your voicemail call history. You, after listening to the voicemail, which will give a transcription, as well as a playback, as well as all of the calling information, you might choose to call them back here. If this is a contact that you'll be uh, using often, you could add them to your speed dial, or you could add them to your contact list, 
Or if you're not going to need it, you can of course delete that voicemail. Again, notice how when I delete this voicemail from my inbox, it also deletes it here. Notice that speed dial is over on the right hand panel of the calls console. I can call regular call or video call someone from here. I can also choose to remove them from my speed dial. To add new others to my speed dial, I can choose add a contact to this group and then search their name. In my history of either all incoming missed or voicemail, I can also choose to add them to my speed dial. You might choose to download the Microsoft Teams app on your phone and have your calls ring there. This is great except for you may not want your calls ringing outside of office hours. There's two ways that you can disable that. The first is before you leave your office to forward to turn on your forwarding to voicemail so that it will send your calls immediately to voicemail. You can get those voicemails and call them back during office hours. The other option is to set up quiet hours on your personal device. This is only available on your actual phone, but you can go to your settings area, choose notifications, and then input quiet time so that you won't get notifications during those hours or days. This is important to know that you won't get any Teams notifications, including calls. This is an image of what your calls would look like on your phone. Notice you have your speed dial, history, and call lock. You have the ability to make new calls or by searching or dialing, as well as access your voicemail in the upper right. This has been an overview of how to use Microsoft Teams Voice.